Hello and welcome to my video all about how to mend holes in socks using the technique of darning. You may think of darning as an old fashioned method. However, it's a great way of fixing holes in a variety of clothing. The idea of darning is to create a new section of woven fabric to fill in the hole. One important thing to note is that darning can only be done on knitted fabric. So this type of mending is good for t-shirts, jumpers and socks. It might seem like an over the top thing to do to mend your own socks, but I think it's so much nicer to mend them than just throw them away. The sock that I'm going to be mending today just has a small hole near the heel. In order to darn this sock, I'm going to need something round to put inside it. Traditionally, I would use a wooden darning egg. However, if you don't have one of those or you don't want to buy one, then you can use anything that's kind of ball shaped. Some people use a tennis ball or even a snooker ball. However, all I have is a styrofoam ball, so that's what I'm going to be using today. This is purely to make the sewing a lot easier to do and also to stop you from sewing into the back of the sock. I'm going to be using this sewing thread in a contrasting white colour. But if I wasn't filming this, I would just use a black sewing thread so that it would blend in with the sock. If you were repairing something like a jumper, you might well be using a yarn instead of a thread. But here, because the yarn in the socks is so fine, you can easily use a thread instead. Just make sure that any thread you use is finer than the thread in the clothing. You'll also need a hand sewing needle. A small darning needle should work, however my darning needles are quite chunky, so I've decided to use a finer, sharper hand sewing needle. Okay, so the first thing I do is take a length of thread and fold it in half. It's okay for me to double this thread because even doubled up, it's finer than the thread in the socks. I usually make sure that the folded size is about the same length as my arm. That way it's not so long that it will tangle easily. I make sure that the thread ends line up and then I feed them through the eye of my needle. I'm using a water soluble white pencil here just to show you the approximate area you need to cover around the hole. You should be aiming to darn at least one centimetre of fabric on all sides of the hole. However, if you have a worn area around the hole that maybe spreads for a couple of centimetres, then you want to be darning that entire worn area. Okay, so to begin, I take my needle from the back of the sock fabric to the front. I do this by going through the hole and coming up a short distance to the bottom left of that hole. I don't pull the thread the entire way through, but instead I leave a loop. I then go back into the sock fabric a very short distance away. So effectively I'm making a very small stitch. I bring the needle up through the hole and I make sure that it also goes through the loop of thread. And then I pull it tight. This secures the start of the thread. And then I come up again through the sock fabric in the same place as that stitch I've just made. It's important when you're darning socks that you don't make any knots because that will be uncomfortable. What I'm going to be doing now is very small running stitches back and forth in a rectangular shape with the hole in the centre of this shape. So I'm going to stay about one centimetre away from the hole edge and I'm going to do a line of running stitches by simply going in and out and in and out of the fabric. Then I pull the needle through and this forms small running stitches. You want the end of this line of stitches to be an appropriate distance above the hole. And then you can turn back round in the opposite direction and do more running stitches. So you're simply going back and forth and stitching very close lines of running stitches. Once you reach the hole in the sock, you need to take the thread over the top of the hole and then continue doing running stitches on the other side. 
try and make the rows of thread very close together. You don't want much of a gap between those threads that go across the hole. Once you get to the end row in the rectangle of stitches, make sure you finish in one corner. And now we're going to do lots more rows of running stitches, but this time perpendicular to the rows we just did. So we're basically going to be doing a crisscross design. So again, we do small running stitches in a row from one end of the rectangle to the other. When we get to the other side, we turn around and we come back again. Once again, making sure that the rows are very close to each other. This time, when you get to the hole in the socks, we're going to be weaving the threads. So you sew running stitches up to the edge of the hole. And then you're going to use your needle to weave over and under and over and under the threads across the hole. So you go over the first thread, under the second, over the third, under the fourth, and over the fifth, and so on, until you reach the other edge of the hole. And then you carry on sewing running stitches. And then when you're going to go across the hole in the other direction, you're basically going to do the opposite of what you did on the first row. So on the previous row where you went over a thread, you're now going to go under that thread. And on the previous row where you went under a thread, you're now going to go over the thread. This technique means that you're creating a new woven section of fabric that's very stable. The reason you have to have these rows of stitches close together is because otherwise there will be big gaps in this woven section. And you simply carry on sewing back and forth like this all the way across the rectangle shape. Once you've finished, it will look like this. Take the darning egg or ball out of the sock and then push the needle through the sock fabric to the back. You can just cut the thread without fastening or securing it in any way because the weaving should hold it in place. However, what I like to do is weave that thread under the backs of a few stitches. So I just take the thread under several stitches on the back of the sock fabric. And then I just cut off the excess thread. And that's it, you've now mended your sock. I'm now going to show you a different method you can use if you're short on time. This method is quite a bit quicker, however the downside is that it ends up thickening the fabric in the area of the repair. That's why I would only recommend that you do this repair in an area that's not going to be under pressure, i.e. not under the foot for instance. This technique uses the ladder stitch. So we're going to go to one side of the hole and do a short running stitch. Then go straight across to the other side of the hole and again do another short running stitch. And then straight across and another running stitch. Then straight across and another running stitch. You'll notice as I started stitching with the stitches closer together and as we approached the hole in the sock, the stitches got further apart. When you reach the hole and you're doing the ladder stitch over the hole, make sure that the stitches are at least a few millimetres outside of where the hole is. The edge of the hole is quite weak, so you want to stay a short distance at least away from that area. When you've reached the end of the stitching, simply pull on the thread like so. And this will bring the sides of the fabric together to hide the hole. 
As you can tell, this thickens the fabric. To secure the thread in this method, I first take the needle to the back of the sock fabric. Then I go in and out of the fabric to make a small stitch. Pull the thread until there's just a small loop remaining and take the needle through that loop and tighten. And then I repeat that step for extra security before cutting off the excess thread. And that's it, that's how you use the ladder stitch to repair a hole in a knit fabric. I really hope this video has been helpful and thank you very much for watching.